This is the daily update for October 9, 2021. Tigray rebels are harassing and robbing Amharas in Dalenga districts of Wadla County. In Habru County, of Hara district, the rebels have completely dismantled and destroyed a railway campsite. They have robbed scores of heavy vehicles, generators, and machines. The campsite was part of a billion burr project towards an extension of railway. In Wuldia and Sarinka, Tigray rebels are kidnapping scores of Amhara youth. Their whereabouts is still unknown. TPLF has continued forcing Amhara youths in Sakota and Wuldia to fight for them. Top TPLF leader, Jatachawarita, has admitted that Tigray rebels in Amhara region are being bombed via airstrikes. Aromo rebels have ordered Aromos to leave Bajina Heron district and have instructed Amharas to stay. Witnesses have said they are planning to massacre Amhara civilians in the area, as they have done for years. Amhara civilians in the region have repeatedly asked for government intervention, but to no avail. In Karamu, Wilega, Aromo rebels have killed an elderly Amhara man called Worki Adisu. In Adi Arke, Gondar, seven Amhara youth who have refused to fight for TPLF have been kidnapped. In a far region, TPLF is shelling civilians in Berhile. In Nok, Kobo, rebels are robbing Amhara farmers of their harvests. Amhara regional government has continued to arrest Fano militias in Dejan, western Gojam. Goom's rebels are still holding Goom's residents of Kamakshi zone as hostages and their situation is deteriorating. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This is the daily update for October 10, 2021. The Afar people are asking for the government to either bomb TPLF artilleries or provide them with heavy weapons because rebels are shelling Afar civilians. Several Afar civilians have been killed and injured in Ewa region. In Karamu, Wilega, Aromo rebels are committing genocide on Amhara civilians, and they have, so far killed 30 Amharas. Aromo regional forces and Aromo residents left the county, leaving Amharas exposed to be massacred. For over two weeks, Amhara residents had asked the federal government to protect them, and so far, the federal government has not responded, and killings have continued. The number of displaced Amharas camped in Desi has now surpassed half a million, and more Amharas are flocking to the city. In the Gushana area, Tigray rebels have destroyed Madhanyalam Church. The church is still burning as we speak. In Wuldia, scores of Amharas are dying from hungers on a daily basis, as rebels still control the city. In Wadla County, in Michigan area, Tigray rebels are engaged in robbing Amhara farmers' harvests. In Kobo, names of those working with TPLF has been made public, their name are Afawark, Solomon, and Dawit Ambao. These individuals are providing intelligence to the rebels, and they're having Amharas robbed, killed, and tortured. Also in Kobo, in areas of Ghoulish, Koba, and Jaroda, rebels are going house to house and robbing civilians. As a result, many people are fleeing Kobo. The TPLF has given its rebels a directive to park its vehicles near civilian houses and churches, and so it can serve as a cover, and in the process, have Amhara civilians killed. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This is the daily report for October 11, 2021. Aromo rebels in Karamu Wilega of Aromo region have continued to kill Amharas. The federal government has refused to intervene. Amhara residents have stated that the Aromo regional government is the one aiding and supporting Aromo rebels. They say the killings are well designed. In Wello, Wargesa, over 50,000 Amhara IDPs are in urgent need of aid. In Ambassal District 14, Tigray rebels are robbing, torturing, and killing Amharas. Similarly, in Lalabella, Tigray rebels are beating, torturing and killing Amharas. Also, in Lalabella, Tigray rebels have stationed artillery and mortars near historical churches. The Western media headlines have classified the TPLF as a victim, even though TPLF has invaded Amhara region and is committing massacres. Analysts say the headlines are about setting Western agenda and propaganda on Ethiopia. The United Nations has fired Maureen Chiang, who was IAM chief of mission to Ethiopia and representative to AU and UNICA. The UN has not given an official statement, but experts and analysts say it is because she was exposing the UN's agenda of supporting TPLF rebels. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This is the daily report for October 13, 2021. Aromo rebels are massacring Amharas in various areas throughout western Aromo region, Wilega. Even though the residents have continuously pleaded with the federal government to intervene, the answer has been silence. Residents have repeatedly stated that the Aromo regional government works with OLF rebels and it is facilitating the massacres. As of yesterday, Amhara residents claim that the Karamu County leader himself told them verbatim 
that he would make sure to ethnic cleanse them from the county and district. As of now 50,000 Amhara IDPs in Karamu area are in grave danger. In Habru, in areas of Kul Baine, Ararti, Fajera, and Ligo, Tigray rebels have burned over 200 houses of farmers. In Delanta County of Chenna, the rebels are shelling civilians deliberately. In Wadla County, near Sharaginat, the rebels have robbed Mariam and Midhanyalam churches, and they have also wounded several civilians, and two children are missing. Tigray rebels are using civilian houses, churches, schools, and hospitals as a cover. In Kobo, an additional informant by the name of Negus Dognachu is helping TPLF kill, torture, and kidnap civilians. Report on the damages Tigray rebels inflicted on the health sector in Amhara region is as follows. They have stolen 48 ambulances, robbed and destroyed 14 hospitals, 153 health clinics, and 642 health stations. An addition of 20 hospitals, 227 health clinics, and 1162 health stations, and two blood banks are forced to give partial services. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This is the daily report for October 14, 2021. The Oromo region government has classified Amhara civilians being massacred in Walega as terrorists. The spokesperson said there are no victims and that Amharas are not being massacred and that they are not under the attack of Oromo rebels. This is despite the facts on the ground which are substantiated with proof. Meanwhile, Amharas are pleading for the international community to intervene and save them. The Oromo government sent its regional force to kidnap Amhara youth, who it alleged were posting pictures and videos of the victims on social media. The youths are still missing. In Benchangal, Kamashi County, many IDPs are dying of hunger and malaria. The IDPs say that the federal government and regional government do not care. They also say that Gums rebels are killing and kidnapping people. In Ambassal, Tigray rebels have completely robbed and destroyed homes, schools, and health clinics. In Habru, Dire Roka, Sodoma, Jirana, and Fuji, Tigray rebels are on a revenge spree after they were beaten several times before. They are going door to door and killing civilians. They've so far killed 70 civilians and burned 200 homes of farmers. Similarly, in Mekat, Tigray rebels have killed 31 civilians. In Wag Hamra, extreme shortage has taken over the region, and the people are in desperate need of aid. Hundreds of Amharas from Habru and Kobo are fleeing to Chifra and Ewa Afar region. In Afar, the Afar Human Rights Organization has confirmed Tigray rebels have injured and killed civilians. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This is the daily update for October 15, 2021. Aromo rebels are still killing Amhara civilians in Karamu, Walega. The federal government has still remained quiet. The victims have repeatedly claimed that the rebels are getting help from Oromo regional government. They also add that the regional government is helping them transport arms and rebels using ambulances. In Wulo, China area, Tigray rebels have killed Amhara civilians and burned several houses after they lost the town to the Ethiopia military. Similarly, the rebels are shelling Wakle and Wargesa cities with artilleries killing several civilians. Seeing the recent drone deal between Ethiopia and Turkey, Egypt demands Western countries freeze the deal. Catherine Tai, U.S. Global Trade Representative, said Washington would soon decide on Ethiopia's status under the African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, an agreement which gives it duty-free access to the United States. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.